In today's video, we discuss a few ways that you can make sure you're fully prepared for the upcoming Ethereum merge. So let's go ahead and dive in. Today's video is sponsored by the team behind HiveOS. HiveOS has partnered with the Hobbyist Miner channel to announce their next big move in the GPU mining space worldwide. HiveOS is excited to announce their Ravencoin mining pool goes live very soon. With the launch of a brand new Ravencoin mining pool comes 0% pool fees till the end of 2022. 0% transaction fees, a 10 Ravencoin minimum payout threshold, and finally, a PPS plus mining pool reward system. Head on over to HiveOS.net for more details. And thanks again to HiveOS for supporting the hobbyist miner community. What is going on miners and welcome back to the hobbyist miner channel. Well, the Ethereum merge is here. We are less than two weeks away and I cannot believe it. With less than two weeks away, I gotta ask, are you ready? So in today's video, we're going to go over four items that I feel are important to make sure that you check off your list to make sure that you're ready for the upcoming Ethereum merge. So let's dive into number one. Okay, so number one is an easy one, but it's also a lot of work to do now, but it'll be so rewarding later when it's just a few clicks of a button. And the first item that I recommend is that you have all of your flight sheets set up for your mining rigs. So let's go over and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll go with our mining shed here, and then I'm gonna go down to my Wolverine rig. Now, this rig is a 12 GPU RX 6600 rig. And uh, this is in my Octominer X12. And this rig's awesome. It's done super well. I've been very happy with it. Something that I wanna make sure that you guys do and that I will be doing over the next two weeks is setting up a flight sheet for each of the coins that I believe that I'm gonna be mining. So once you're into the rig itself, select flight sheet. And here you can see, like I have my Ergo flight sheet here and I have my pool already selected and my miner. I have all that ready to go. Now this rig I'm fortunate with because I don't have a mix of different algorithms or uh, different types of cards. This is all AMD cards. So this is an easy one to do versus some of the more complicated ones. But what I like to do is when I'm creating a flight sheet is I name the, I put the name of the rig in the flight sheet name, the algorithm or ergo here, and then also the miner. I recommend that you set one of these up for every rig and as well for every algorithm or coin. So for this one here, RX 6600s, I'm gonna make sure that I set up one for Ergo, that I set up one for Ravencoin, Ethereum Classic, Flux, Neoxa, maybe Conflux, you know, kind of anything that I think I may need. So that at the time of the merge, I can flip as I want to and as I need to based off of where profitability is. Now, pool switching can be questionable because you run into a lot of issues with hitting that minimum payout threshold, but being able to swap your uh, HiveOS flight sheets on the fly will be super beneficial come the day of the Ethereum merge. Okay, so the second item is actually gonna piggyback directly off the first item, but this one, this one's gonna be huge. Take the time over the next two weeks and fine tune your cards and the overclock settings for each of those algorithms. So we talked about having a handful of different flight sheets available to you so that you can swap the uh, flight sheet on the fly real quick. You can even do it from your phone, you know, nice and easy through the HiveOS mobile app. But as you swap those algorithms, what needs to follow along with that? your overclock settings and your undervolt settings. So let's go ahead and go over how to have those overclock settings saved, ready to go, so you can swap very quickly come the Ethereum merge. So jumping over here, we're taking a look at my Scarlet Witch rig, and this is a handful of 570s. These cards have been a nightmare from day one, but perfect one to highlight here. So if I go over to HiveOS, find my rig and go to overclocking. So you see right now I have the default config up and it has all my overclock settings in there. I can hit edit and you can see all the overclock settings for all of these RX 570s. Now these are on Ergo right now. So the best thing to do here is you see to the right hand side, there's this little copy button. 
click on that. And now it's gonna ask you, what do these overclock settings, what should, what should they be assigned to? And at the current moment, you can see at the top, it says auto light goes too, so for ergo. So if I hit save here, look what it does. It saves now the algorithm on the left as well as the overclock settings directly in the middle. So I could go ahead now and configure these, go back here to the overview of the rig. I could flip this to like Ravencoin, let's say, and then I could set all my overclock settings. Once that's done and I've tested it and I fine tuned it, I can go back to my overclock tab. I can hit that copy button again, and then I would change my algorithm at the top to Ravencoin and save it. And now I have like an auto Lycos for Ergo, I have a Ravencoin and I can do one for Ethereum Classic and Flux and I can have all of these ready to go. So once I flip my flight sheet, I can then go ahead and piggyback off of that and, and flip over the overclock settings. So it's a click, click and done. I'm set and ready to go and I can swap between different algorithms and coins very easily. Okay, so moving on to number three. And this one, I think, is one that we as home crypto miners have already overlooked and we're not thinking about, and that is heat management. So right now, most of you guys, most of you over the last year or two or three, you know, you're mining Ethereum and Ethereum uses X amount of uh, heat and creates X amount of heat. And so you have your home crypto mining set up for the current situation, not what could be after the Ethereum merge. Now, Ergo could pop off and all of us are on Ergo for the next several years or something like that. But what happens if we go the direction of Flux or Ravencoin or Neoxon, like the Kapow algorithm? Um, that could be detrimental. You know, maybe you get lucky and you do a lot of Ethereum Classic mining. So between ETH and Ethereum Classic, you know, you're swapping things over. Your heat management stays exactly the same. Your intake, your exhaust, your airflow, your heat created, it stays the same. So you're good. But let's not gamble i'd hate for you to be in a situation as a home crypto miner where you go i want to swap to ravencoin but i can't because i'm not set up to handle that type of heat so think about your heat management if you were to take your current mining setup and double the heat let's just throw it out there let's double that heat can you handle it are you are you ready for it so let's look at a few options that i have used over the last two years that i would highly recommend that you consider in the next two weeks, getting, installing, setting up, and definitely testing. Okay, so we ventured on over to the AC Infinity website, and we'll start here. We're gonna talk a few, about a few things, a few things I recommend, a few things that you stay away from, and then we'll talk about not only exhaust, but we'll talk about intake and things like that that I recommend that you consider as a home crypto miner. Now, totally understand that not everything works for everyone. Not everybody can afford everything out there that's available to us. Not every scenario is the same. Not everything is identical. We're all home crypto miners, so we all get pretty creative uh, at trying to figure things out at home with what we have. Totally understand it. Totally respect it. So taking a look over at AC Infinity's website, I have used and purchased the four inch inline fans. Do not touch these. Do not, do not touch these. I would actually say the same thing about the six inch options with AC Infinity. They just do not put out enough CFM to do the job. And you might think, oh, well, it's better than nothing. Don't waste your money, don't waste your time. I spent way too much money doing the four inch and the six inch. I have said many times on my channel, do not use anything lower than an eight inch inline fan for crypto mining. A lot of these are designed for uh, plant-based um, growth inside of the home, inside grow tents. They're not meant for like crypto miners. So eight inch or higher guys, absolutely recommend the eight inch. The eight inch puts out over 800 CFM. It is ridiculous how effective these are. So go over and check it out. There's a few different models. It really just comes down to the controller that's available to you. Uh, if you want to spend a few extra dollars, you can go with the controllers that are digital, that are Bluetooth and set up and good to go, but nothing lower than an eight inch. All right. So now let's talk about if you have an opportunity to go with a shutter fan. These are the cream of the crop. So like if you have an exterior wall, like a walkout basement where you can put it on an exterior wall or you're dealing with a shed or you've built yourself an enclosure outside of your home attached to the side of the home and you have an external facing wall, shutter fans are God's gift to the world. I'm gonna be honest with you. I have four shutter fans in my crypto mining shed. These are the T16s. So if you come down here and we look at the T16 here, 
Let's click on that. These do 2,560 CFM each. So that puts me over 10,000 CFM in my shed. Well, guess what? Right now, it's 90 outside in Pennsylvania. I have one of these T16 fans on. Three of them are not even being used. So I am, granted, I might have gone overboard here, okay, for my six foot by eight foot shed. But the nice thing is, is if I need to scale up in my exhaust, I got three more of these suckers ready to go. I actually rotate them just to make sure that like the, the bearings are constantly being moved and stuff. So every day I go out and just change to a different one of these four shutter fans. I know, overkill, totally understand. But that gives you an idea. My entire shed, over 100 GPUs, 2,560 CFM with one T16 exhaust fan for 269. Now, understood, there's alternatives out there. You don't have to go the AC Infinity route. I'm not pushing this. I'm just saying, look what's out there. Pick the option that works best for you. I'll put links to all these down below. So another option I'd like to discuss is grow tents. Grow tents, grow tents, grow tents. So grow tents work for some people. They don't work for others. It all depends on your density. It all depends on your airflow. I have seen the best success and use grow tents when you pull air from outside your home for the intake and you exhaust air outside the home. I have had a lot of trouble with pulling air in through the grow tent side vents and just using my home's ambient air. I've had a lot of trouble with air conditioning and keeping the, uh, the rigs cold. The biggest thing that I've learned about grow tents and even about a mining shed is airflow. Airflow, airflow. Don't depend on your air conditioner. Don't depend on getting an AC unit or a window unit and trying to make it work. It's not necessarily about how cold the air is. You have to remember when your GPUs, you know, can be comfortable up past 70 C, they're okay at 100, 110, 120 degree Fahrenheit air blowing across them. It's okay, do the conversion. I mean, what is 70 C, like 150 or something like that Fahrenheit? It's crazy, so you're good. So remember when you're looking at this, it's about airflow. Build yourself a wind tunnel with a grow tent, with a shed, with a box, whatever you wanna do. It's all about airflow, how quickly the air can come in and how quickly you can exhaust that air that has gone over the, the cards, that's it. Okay, so last recommendations I'll have for you is on the intake side. So every scenario is different, totally understand. I have two different types of vents that I can recommend. The first one is a gable style vent and it actually pulls apart and you can put a filter inside of it. So it's perfect for any exterior facing walls. If you're using something like a crypto mining shed or room or some box enclosure or something like that. So I have one of those down below and then I have another one that's become available to me that it, someone, uh, one of my community members brought to my attention that has a boatload of different sizes. So these are pretty cool. Uh, I haven't tested these yet, but what I like about these is they come with a full size filter. You don't have to kind of create your own, which was the first one that I had shown there. So I'm gonna put links to these down below. Please go over and check them out, find what works best for you. Now, if you're going the route of the inline fans, I recommend that you guys check out air intake filter boxes. Those are the best thing to use um, in your scenario. So then finally, if you're also looking for something hooded, I learned my lesson very quickly. You want hooded, hooded, hooded. You want intake vents. Now this can work for an inline fan or other situations. You want hooded vents that have a cover to help against rain or critters and things like that. These work very well. I have two of these in my crypto mining shed and I've used a variety of different ones in my crypto mining basement room. These are what I would recommend nine out of 10 times. So make sure that you guys are spending the time evaluating your current heat situation. And can you scale up if needed? Because guess what? Every algorithm is different. Flux is gonna run warmer than Ethereum. Kapow with your Ravencoin with your Neoxa is gonna run even warmer. So you need to make sure that you keep all of these in mind. I'd hate to see you guys limited to what you can mine and your profitability based off of, oh, well, I didn't think about this and I don't have this, this setup in place to handle this type of heat. So keep that in mind in the next two weeks as we get closer to the Ethereum merge. Okay, so the fourth item that we wanna make sure that we pay attention to before the Ethereum merge to best prepare for it coming up in the next two weeks is your power management. Where do you stand in your power situation? A lot of you guys are, that watch my channel are home crypto miners, hell yeah. But the challenge is, is that I know what it's like. You have extension cords run all over the place. You got rigs in different rooms. You're trying to balance things out without popping breakers. And that's on like Ethereum right now or Ergo right now. Imagine if things change, just like we talked about on the heat management side. Think about it on the power side. If all of a sudden 
your power need doubles. Oh crap. Like, what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to manage that? So something I recommend is that you get yourself a voltage meter to help start your testing. So start today, swap your rigs over to the worst of the worst. So let's say it's like Ravencoin, which is, which is the most heat and power intensive is Ravencoin. You also can look at like an Eoxa, both of those use the Kapow algorithm. So grab yourself something like a voltage meter. So one of my favorite voltage meters that has never burned up, so I'm very happy with it, is the kilowatt voltage meter. There's a whole bunch out there. A lot of other YouTubers can recommend a lot of other ones out there, but this is a quick, easy option for your home crypto miners. And the goal here is monitor your power consumption, make sure there isn't anything else on the circuit or the breaker, and check this based off of the different algorithms and do the math. You know, when I go from Ethereum to this, I can't go on this outlet. I have to go on this outlet or vice versa. Uh, something else you can do is if you are kind of taking mining to the next level is look at something like the meter box. The meter box has these awesome meter boxes that you can build with the Drox meter built in with them and you monitor your wattage. I use these constantly in my crypto mining room as well as out in my shed. This is what I use. I actually do a... Um, 240 uh, volt 30 amp locking plug uh, that's like the l630r and then i have these and with my pdu setup and so i'm constantly like okay i'm at 5600 watts i'm done on on this circuit that's the most i can get i'm safe and i can adjust it do your testing swap all your rigs to ravencoin or kapow and then see where you sit are you safe now remember you want to stay at the 80 20 rule so what that means is that you need to take like let's say it's a 30 amp times 240 volt and that gives you like 7200 i think the math is there okay then you need to times that by 80 percent and that's what you safely can use you can't use the whole circuit i mean you could but now you're risking a fire you're risking damage to your home and your safety so make sure that you consider that 80 percent and think about it more as to oh what can i swap to what outlets can i utilize what outlets can i not what is safe what is not all right miners that's it four tips for you we've been hanging out for a little over 10 minutes here hopefully you got something out of this maybe it's prepping your flight sheets to make sure they're all set and ready to go your pools are selected you got uh, your miners all selected. You got the additional configuration in place. Maybe it's the overclock settings. You got all your template overclock settings in place. It's tested, good to go. Heat management, or maybe even the power management. Hopefully you gained something from this video to make you in the next two weeks go, hmm, I kind of forgot about that. I need to make sure I spend some time on that. Well, if this video was helpful, please go ahead and give it one of these. And finally, if you're brand new and you're checking this out for the very first time, and you're like, I like it. I like these recommendations. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it and it'll notify you when I drop my next mining video. Well guys, take care.